Praise the Lord, you've joined New Beginning Community Church. We thank you for joining us this evening for Bible study. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We do not own the rights to this music, but join us as we uplift the name of the Lord in the sanctuary. Assemble together in his name. We can study of his word. Mm -hmm. We can study of the word of God. Learn and know what the Lord is requiring of us. Yes. And so we just thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to move back in. And so, thank God for each and every one of you being here with us on tonight. Mm -hmm. Fellowshipping with us on tonight. Uh, we know that the Lord is soon to come. And, you know, we've been 
church folks know we've been saying that a long time. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is coming. Oh, yeah, he's coming. Left, he left me coming back. Amen. The angel told him, ask the two men in Galilee, say, why stand ye here gazing? Up in, up in the cloud, the same Jesus whom you see mm -hmm. coming back in like manner. So he left coming back. So we can't be waiting for no burning bushes. He mm -hmm. left coming back. Mm -hmm. So if you're waiting for the burning bush, <laughs> you are, you thousands and thousands of years too late, Moses. <laughs> the Lord left coming back. But we have another lesson tonight about the power of the Holy Ghost and the help, help of the Lord. And we want to try to uh, encourage the body of Christ tonight. Try to strengthen your heart and uh, try to get you excited about all the provisions that the Lord has made for his people. Mm -hmm. Thank God we serve a, a, a God that didn't just put us out there to fend for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so he's always with us. His presence is always with us. And so we have another lesson tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to get into it. But bow our heads. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come tonight thanking you once again. For your tender mercy and your kindness, we thank you, Lord God, for another opportunity to come before your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for being such an awesome God. We thank you for a desire to, to study of your word. We know that heaven and earth shall pass away, but you said your word will abide forever. And so we thank God that we can stand firm on your word because we know that it is eternal. You have spoken it from the foundation of the world. And so we ask that you would move in this place tonight according to your will, according to our needs. We'll praise you, we'll glorify We pray for those, Lord, that are out in, uh, that are viewing us, fellowshipping with us uh, via Facebook Live, Zoom, and YouTube. We pray, Father, that your favor would be upon them, that you would encourage their hearts and minds continually. And we'll praise you and we'll glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We still dealing with the church tonight. We moved on out of Timothy. We down now to the Hebrew saints, dealing with the Hebrew saints, predominantly the Jewish Christians, predominantly the Jewish Christian converts. And the writer, the Hebrew writer is trying to encourage them and keep them from falling back into Judaism, falling back into the old practices that the Lord has delivered them from. Mm -hmm. And so we have to take heed and understand that. that uh, and so we're in the, the fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews tonight. The fourth chapter of the book of Hebrews, and we're going to read... Uh, we're going to read verses uh, 14, verses 14 through 16. And our focus verse is verse 16. We'll, we'll raise that up for you in a bit. We're going to start up, uh, I increased the font, so yeah. you can't really tell, but it's taking up more space. You can't yeah. really tell. Uh, so we're going to start. Hebrews 4 and, and uh, 14. I'll be reading King James Version tonight. You follow whatever translation that you use. 14 verse says, Seeing then that we have a great uh, high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. 16. Let us therefore come bold, I'm sorry, let us therefore come boldly mm -hmm. unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That's what we're dealing with tonight. Our thought tonight is come boldly unto the throne of grace. Right. Hebrew writer is 
trying to encourage the Christian believer, the born again Christian believer, uh, to 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 come boldly. And that word boldly, that word boldly, as we're going to deal with it in this lesson, it, it suggests uh, with great confidence, uh, courageous, trust, be brave, mm -hmm. and without showing fear or hesitation, boldly. But in this lesson, we're gonna we're gonna lean more towards confidence, confidence, with great confidence, mm -hmm. with great confidence. And uh, that word "throne of grace" is another one that we want to uh, define or, or, or describe. That word "throne of grace." suggests to us the sovereign character and presence of God who is sympathetic and understanding. It also suggests justice which is judgment, mercy, grace, uh, God's mercy seat. God's mercy seat. This is described as the throne of grace. And so the Hebrew writer in the 16th verse is letting them know uh, he's, he's in, from 14 to 15 he's reminding you and I of uh, the works of our high priest mm -hmm. which is the son of God which is Jesus Christ. And when you know the Hebrew system, as they knew the Hebrew system, that uh, the, the Day of Atoning took place every year and the high priest had to go in and sacrifice an animal without spot or blemish. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to sacrifice the blood first for himself and his sins and then for the sins of uh, the nation, of Israel, the nation. And this happened every year. This happened every year. And so, uh, but now, uh, now since Christ, and the Hebrew, the Hebrew writer is, is also trying to get the Hebrew Christian, the Jewish Christian, Hebrew Christian, to understand the superiority in Christ. Versus uh, the law or the old sacrificial system of Moses, or even before Moses. But he's trying to get the saints to understand the superiority of Jesus Christ. Not only does it apply to the Hebrew saints, but you and I must also take heed. Because there is there, there is nothing greater to the church, to the body of Christ, uh, than our Messiah. Christ is the preeminent, and so the writer the writer tells them, seeing that in fourteen he says, see seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, we understand that Christ. Uh, transcends all principalities. Christ transcends. He's not limited. He was. He was not limited like those priests to death. Those priests died and couldn't continue in the priesthood. But Christ died and uh, rose again. And scriptures say passed into the heavens. So he transcends all human. Limitation, limitations. It says, Jesus, the Son of God, said, let us hold fast our profession. Verse 15, said, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. We have, in other words, he, he understands, 
he understands everything that we go through. He, 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 he understands our infirmities, our weaknesses, our challenges, our dilemmas, our conditions, our situations. He, un he understands all of them. See, we have, he, the scripture said, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Mm -hmm. He can, it says he cannot be touched. That means he, he is a, 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 a passion, a compassionate. He's moved. He's moved by what uh, what bothers us. Right. <laughs> so this is our high priest. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. It said, but was in all points tempted like as we are. It says, but was in all points tempted. Now tempted, tempted is also uh, a word for try. Because when you're tempted, you're tried. Mm -hmm. He said, but was in all points tempted like as we are, or tried as we are. He said, yet without sin, yet without sin. And so the 16th verse said, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Now, understand why. It said that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mercy, the scripture said, it is because of his mercies we're not consumed. And we understand that grace is unmerited favor. So hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He is saying, come boldly unto the throne of grace. In other words, come with great confidence unto the throne of grace or unto the sovereign character or presence of God. Come, come with confidence into the presence of God. The throne of grace is the presence of God. Right. Come confidently to the presence of God that you may obtain mercy <laughs> and find favor to help in the time of need. This, we're talking about the superiority of Christ to the body of Christ. We are we are urged to cast all of our cares upon him because he cares. Mm -hmm. He has transcended death. He has scripture said he has passed into the heavens and he can be touched. He said he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity, with he, he he feels our he has compassion and he feels our weaknesses and those things that we're struggling with. He said he was also tried or tempted, just like you and I, mm -hmm. except he didn't sin. Right. So it, it suggests that not only when we struggle, but when we sin, mm -hmm. that we come with confident, confident, with great confidence. Or we come courageously, or we come trusting, right. or we come brave right. without showing any fear, any hesitation, or any doubt. He said, to the unto the throne of grace, or unto the sovereign character or presence of God. Come, he said, come with confidence. The Bible said that if we sin, he said, if we confess our sin. He is faithful and just yes, yes. to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So you have to understand what the throne of grace represents. The throne of grace represents justice, uh, mercy, grace. It represents a, a, a sympathetic and an understanding Savior, right. which is God our Savior. If the Lord, if the Lord wanted to condemn us, He would have did that long ago. We've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He is making provisions. He has made provisions. He has passed into the heavens mm -hmm. after His atoning and propit the propitiation of, of the sins, not only ours but the sins of the whole world. After He paid the price, after He appeased God. He passed into the heavens. 
Now, while he is in the heavens, he's on the right hand of majesty. And he intercedes. The, the, he, the same Hebrew writer later on will let them know that he forever intercedes, make intercession for us. <laughs> but the understanding is you have, you and I have to put on humility mm -hmm. and we have yeah. to humble ourselves and we have to come with, with confidence into the presence of God. We have to come in with confidence into the sovereign character of God. God is sovereign. His character, his, his character is sovereign. God is omniscient. He knows all. He's omnipotent. He has all authority. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. So there's nowhere and there's nothing that we can, can do that he doesn't know about. But we cannot take the spirit of Adam and Eve when we error or sin and go hide. That was their mistake. They hid. Because when the Lord came back to the place where he would fellowship with them, the voice of God would walk with them in the cool of the day. They, they were not there. They hid themselves. You and I cannot try to cover sin. <laughs> you and I cannot you and I cannot try to cover sin. Adam would call it, they would say, say he hid, which is trying to cover. We cannot do that. Because because of our high priest and because he has compassion and he can be touched with our infirmities, he said we can come with confidence into the presence of God. The presence of God, the throne of grace is God's mercy seat. And the Bible lets us know uh, because of Excuse me, because of his mercies, we're not consumed. Right. It's because of his mercy. Mm -hmm. So come with confidence, with humility. Come with confidence, humility, and a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. Don't come, uh, don't come arrogantly and pridefully, and and with with a conf with a, 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 a confession mm -hmm. with 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 just your mouth. And, and not your heart, because he understands. He understands that these people worship me with their lips and their mouth, but their heart is far from me. So what we must understand is that what the Hebrew writer is trying to get the saints, the Hebrew saints, to understand the superiority of Christ. And just as the high priest in Judaism or Judaism would atone. Annually, he's trying to get the saints to understand that Christ, our high priest, has atoned for us. And so we can come bold. We can come confident. We can come confidently into the presence of God. And we can obtain mercy and we can find God's favor in the time of need. This is what we must understand. There's never a time to hide, there's never a time to try to cover. It's only a time he said we he said I, I, I have written these things John said I have written these things unto you that you sin not he said but if any man sin if any man do sin or if any man sin he said we have an advocate with the father we have uh, Jesus Christ the righteous so we have to understand we have to understand what the throne of grace symbolizes this is what we're dealing with tonight come boldly before the throne of grace you and I, you and I are, we are uh, living in the dispensation of grace and truth. So the throne of grace for you and I is a throne of justice. Now it's not, it's going to be a throne of judgment, but now it's a throne of justice. I believe it was, uh, David said, blessed is the man that has his iniquities covered. Who has his iniquity not imputed or transgressions imputed back on him? Christ did not impute our transgressions on, back on him. He did not come and count our errors. He oh didn't my. impute it. We didn't. We didn't come count it. This oh understand. This is the throne of grace. This is the character and uh, 
presence of God, the throne of grace. This is the mercy seat, as it was in the Old Testament, the mercy seat. As the Ark of the Covenant had the mercy seat. The throne of grace is our mercy seat. John, the Gospel of John 10 and 9. It's on the worksheet, the Gospel of John 10 and 9. He said, Jesus says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We're talking about come boldly before the throne of grace. The throne of grace, like I say, is the sovereign character and presence of God. God who is sympathetic and understanding. God, the throne is, is justice, is mercy and grace. It's God's mercy seat. You hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. What is, what is pasture? Pasture is provision. Talking about the dawn of grace. We're talking about mercy. We're talking about focus verses. We're talking about finding grace to help in time of need. He said, I am the door. He said, if you come in by me, you'll be saved. First of all, talking about the dawn of grace. Talking about the superiority of Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. First of all, you got to come in by me. He said, if you enter in by me, you shall be saved. He said, and you shall go in and out and find pastor. You should go in and out. You should, you know, we should live this life. We should live this life. Uh, and we shall find pastor or we should find provision. He shall, provide, he shall be our provider. Mm -hmm. Talking about the throne of grace. Talking about the mercy seat. But we have to understand the superiority of Christ. This is not applied to you and I by any other means, any other measures. We have to come through the door. Yeah, we have to come through the door. Jesus Christ, the high priest, the Hebrew writer talked about, who has passed into heaven. And the Bible says it like this. The Bible says no one has ascended into heaven, but he that first descended from heaven. So you have to hear what the Spirit is saying. He said, I am the door. He's, in one place he told him, I am the bread of life. I am the bread from heaven. From heaven. We have to understand, we have to understand the throne of grace, which is God's mercy seat. And we have to understand the superiority of Christ, which Christ brought grace and truth. Christ brought grace and truth. Moses had the law. Christ brought grace and truth. Scripture said, uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld it's glory or the glory of the of the Father, the glory of the Father, and the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we have to understand the superiority of Christ. He brought he brought the mercy of God. Acts, uh, we're gonna go to Acts four and thirteen. Acts four and thirteen says, "Now when they saw." The boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. We're talking about come boldly before the throne of grace. Acts 14 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, when they saw the boldness, when they saw the confidence, when they saw the courageousness, when they, when they saw the uh, when they saw them without showing fear and without hesitation, 
when they saw the boldness, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. Mm -hmm. uh, unlearned and ignorant men. They, they didn't know. They, they were not highly educated. They perceived that they were not highly educated. It said they marveled and they took knowledge of them. They marveled and they noticed of them that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. They understood, they understood by their great, they understood by the unlearned men, the uneducated men. They understood by their great confidence. These, these un, uneducated men and these unlearned men, their confidence, people took notice of their confidence and understood that they had been with Jesus. Understood that they had been before the throne of grace. Understood, and what is the throne of grace? The throne of grace is the sovereign character and presence of God. They understood by the confidence, by the boldness, by their, by their faith. They understood that these men were not highly educated. But their confidence, their boldness, their faith, the fact that they trusted in their salvation, let allow them to take notice to see that they had been with Jesus, that they had been before the throne of grace. When you when you understand what the throne of grace represents for you and I, the throne of grace is the character, is the sovereign character and presence of God. God, the very fact that it says throne of grace suggests to you his, uh, his sympathetic and understanding merciful graceful ways it's not a throne of judgment it's a throne of grace and we have to understand the difference there is a di now we can come bold before the throne of grace there's going to come a time when we're going to stand before the throne of judgment <laughs> there is a difference yes. now we have to have faith we have to have this confidence we have to come before the Lord, the sovereign uh, character and presence of God with faith, with confidence now. Understanding that, yeah, I error, or yeah, I have this infirmity, or yeah, I have this weakness, and, I'm, and, I, and I understand that you know. So I, I need mercy, and I need favor in my time of need. This is what, what we're dealing with. Now let's let's get into, into the church, back into the church. Mm -hmm. Deal with some saints. Romans, fifth chapter, verse one and two. Romans, the fifth chapter, verse one and two. Uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. verse one and two. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Understanding our thoughts tonight, come boldly before the throne of grace. Understanding uh, that our high priest, Jesus Christ, made this possible made this possible, and we are compelled, we are urged to come before uh, the throne of grace confidently or faithfully or with faith or courageously, but we have to come with faith, understanding that uh, verse 1 said, therefore being justified by faith, we're just by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about throne of grace. Mm -hmm. Throne of grace. Mm -hmm. 
throne of grace. We are in the dispensation of grace. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is this speaks to the superiority of Christ. It is it is our faith uh, in in Him in His atoning work that gives us that first of all our faith in Him that justifies us. We're talking about the body of Christ. This is Romans the fifth chapter. This is written to the saints. Right. Talking about the body of Christ. I don't know. We like to use the church term like "I'm saved." I'm saved. We 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 got to get we got to get a little deeper than that. We got to go beyond. That. We got to go beyond that because anybody can say you say. Matter of fact, every every Christian, and every faith based organization say they say. We got to go beyond that. We got to get a little deeper than that. We got to understand. We have to definitely understand uh, why and how we are allowed back into the presence of God as mm -hmm. as. As Adam and Eve was exiled out of the presence of God, Jesus Christ, the second Adam, made it possible for you and I to come boldly back before the sovereign character and presence of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying. This is the throne of grace by no other means. And he said we are justified by our faith in, the, in such work, the atoning work. He said, and we have peace with God. In other words, we are... We, those of us that are regenerated, we are no more enmity to God. We're no more hostile against God. We no more oppose God, nor does he oppose us. He said, mm -hmm. and this is through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, Romans 5 and 2 says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Focus verse says, uh, Come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. But he's saying that we have access by faith okay. into this unmerited favor wherein we stand. We understand, we know that we stand on unmerited favor of God. And we have to uh, <laughs> we have to come bold before the throne of God. We have we have to have that justified faith. It has to be faith. Our salvation is not by works. Our salvation is not by formalism. It's not by legalism. It is not by ceremonialism. It is not by knowledge or Gnosticism. It is not by any of that stuff. Our salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation is deliverance. Mm -hmm. Our deliverance is by faith in Jesus Christ. Right. The scripture said we were sealed after we believed, we were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. When we heard the word and the word pricked our hearts and we repented of our sin and of our ways and we were buried with Christ in baptism in Jesus' name, and we were filled with the Holy Spirit of promise. We are justified by faith now. Mm -hmm. We have to live by faith, yeah. which is uh, this great confidence that we're talking about. Ephesians, Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2, 14 uh, through 18. And let me go there. Ephesians 2, 14. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 14 through 18. Verse 14 says, For he is our peace, who has made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We're talking about Jew and Gentile. Because this is what the early church was made of, of Jew Jew. Gentile. 15. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of two one new man so making peace. That's what we talked about a little earlier. 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity therefore. That's what we're talking about. 
that he may reconcile both Jew and Gentile. He said to one body, one body, one body uh, by the cross, by the atoning sacrificial death on the cross, by the, <laughs> by the shedding of the blood and by the giving of his life. He told his father, he said, it is finished and gave up the ghost. And they pierced him in his side. The scriptures say out of his side came blood and water. Not blood only, but blood and water. The scriptures say there are three that bear record on earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. So you need three, three and one. The spirit, the water, and the blood was all in the body of Christ. We ain't dealing with that right now. Uh, but it just came to me. 17. He said, And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were not. What we're looking for. 18. And 18 says, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, verse 17. This is the verse 17. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were not or near. We're talking about the throne of grace. He came and he preached peace to those that were far off or to those that wasn't even thinking about them and to those that are near. You have to understand what the Spirit is saying. We are living in the time now of the throne of grace. We can go, we can come before the throne of grace. When the Lord come back, it's going to be too late. That's going to be the throne of judgment. And it ain't going to be no crying and bleeding at that point. The Bible said at that point it's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And it, you and I are you and I are in the dispensation of grace where he's preaching peace to you and I. There's good news now. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is the good news. You can come boldly before the throne of grace and you can obtain mercy and you can find grace or unmerited favor to help in time of need. This is what, this is what the church is dealing with. This is the ministry teach and preach everything else except for what we ought to preach. We are, we are living in a dispensation of grace. And we ought to compel those to come confidently, confidently before the throne. The high priest, he said, he said, uh, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of your affirmative, he, he, he moved by what we go through. He, he, he feels what we're going through. You know, we got that old, the devil tricks us saying it to, well, I'm going to get right and then I'm going to come in. Here. Our high priest, he already feels, he's already touched, he's already, he already have compassion. You remember, you remember when the multitude followed Follow Jesus for about three days. Jesus said, they've been following me now for three days. And the disciples said, well, send them away so they can find <laughs> food to eat. Jesus had compassion. He, was com he had compassion on them because they had followed him three days without eating nothing. He said, no, we can't send them away. He said, send them down. And he sent them down and, you know, the rest he fed them. This is the type of high priest that we have that he can be touched yes. with, our, with our weaknesses, our infirmities. We are, we, are looking, we are looking for salvation. We are looking for deliverance. We just been misled to think that we're supposed to come up with it. <laughs> we have a high priest that has passed into the heavens and he's making intercession for us. There is Bible said there, uh, the, 
the scripture says, for neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must, whereby we must be saved. There is no other name. All right, I got to run my time. Uh, Ephesians, third chapter, scoot over just a little bit, the third chapter, and let's read 8 through 13. Ephesians, third chapter, and let's read verses 8 through 13. Eight, verse 8 says, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. What are we going? 8 to 13. The manifold wisdom of God. Verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Uh, 13, no, 12 is what we want to be. 13, wherefore I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Verse 12 is what we wanted. He said, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. By the faith of him, by the faithfulness, by the fidelity, by the faithfulness, by the trustworthiness, by uh, by the simple by the simple worthiness of him. For he and he alone is worthy. Great is thy faithfulness. The scriptures we read. Uh, it just it speaks to the, su the superiority of Christ to the church. We have to understand that Christ is our Lord and he's our Savior. We have to understand that we can come bold before the presence of God, that we can obtain mercy and, and get favor, unmerited favor, in the time of need. We have to Understand that we have this benefit as the body of Christ. Uh, Roman, I'm, I'm sorry, Hebrews. Back to Hebrews 10, 19, 20. It's on the worksheet. And then we're going to run on out in my time. Hebrews 10, 19, and 20 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, verse 20, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil of that is to say, his flesh. We just read in we just read in Ephesians where Paul said that uh, by the cross, what happened by the cross, and so we understand that through the veil, through the veil, which is his flesh, that uh, he consecrated us. He separate, he consecrated us. Uh, <laughs> the boldness, verse 19 said, having therefore, brethren, the boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We have to go boldly into the throne of grace. We have to understand the throne of grace instinctively makes it the mercy seat of Christ. You are, you are compelled to come while you have mercy. Hear what the Spirit is saying. You are compelled to repent, to get it right while we have mercy. We can find the favor when we need help. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Uh, First Peter, First Peter 3, 18. I'm going to run. 1 Peter 3, 18. It says, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by
by the Spirit, being put to death in the flesh. It said, For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, that he might bring us to God, that he might bring us to God. We're talking about the throne of grace. Might bring us to God. Uh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. We, we got to run. Our time is up. First John four seventeen. It says, "Herein is our love made perfect." I'm sorry. First John. 417 it said, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. We have to understand, you and I have to understand that we are compelled. We are compelled we are compelled to come boldly confidently we are compelled to come confidently before the throne of grace or before the mercy seat of God or before the presence of God that we would obtain mercy and that we would find favor in the time of need. As it is always, we encourage you to repent of your sin and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of them and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. We are living in the time of grace and the man Except the man is born again of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can enter into the kingdom of God now confidently, boldly, you know, humbly. And so we pray that you would receive something from the word, that you would stay encouraged, and that you would understand the Lord have designed it that we are victorious. We are not defeated. Doesn't matter what we go through, what doesn't matter what we endure, what we have to suffer, what we have to encounter. We have to understand we have a throne of grace. We have a throne of grace that we can that we can go confidently into and we can and we can always remain victorious in Jesus Christ. Pray that you receive something in the word. We will give you up. The bow heads, dear gracious to him, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for being the Lord of our lives. We thank you that you, 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 you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. Yes, we thank you that you commended your love towards us when we were sinners shall spent. In other words, you demonstrated love, what it should look like, what it should be like. We ask that you will continue to be the Lord of our lives. We ask that you will continue to Bless us with your new mercies morning by morning. Mm -hmm. Great is thy faithfulness. We thank you for your unfailing compassion. We ask that you would take us from this place, never from your presence. Bring us back again at the appointed time. Look down on each and every one of us according to your favor, according to your grace, according to our needs. And we'll praise you, glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.